Okay. Did you study paleontology in school? I studied paleontology at university. When I was in elementary school and high school, there were no paleontology courses, so I just kind of studied it on my own. But when I got to university, I did lots of studies and courses about paleontology. I did about 10 years of university, so I got a PhD in zoology, the study of animals, but my specialty was dinosaurs. What kinds of dinosaurs have you found and where were they? Wow. I've had the pleasure and the honor of finding dinosaurs in countries all over the world. I used to work a lot in Africa, in places like Zimbabwe and Kenya and South Africa. Um, but I did many years of work in Madagascar and some of the favorite dinosaurs that I ever found were on the island of Madagascar. Uh, a little buck-toothed carnivore called Mashikasaurus. And, and then I guess my favorites otherwise are in North America for about the last 15 years I've been working in southern Utah and every year we find a new species of dinosaur. So altogether I've named about 15 different kinds of dinosaurs and my absolute favorite is a relative of Triceratops. So, you know Triceratops it's got the three horns, one over each eye and one on the nose. My favorite is Cosmoceratops and we found this one in southern Utah. Cosmoceratops has 15 horns on its head all on the back and the nose and the face. It's an amazing animal and that's my favorite. What's the best part of being a paleontologist? What's the best part of being a paleontologist? I would say two things. The first thing is finding stuff because when you're out there looking you never know when you're gonna walk around a corner and find a fossil of some animal that nobody has ever seen before and you get to be the first human to see it on the whole planet and it could be something that's absolutely amazing and even if it's not something new just to find a jaw with teeth coming out of it or something that never gets old so that's one of my favorite parts and my other favorite part about being a paleontologist is getting to talk to kids like you because I get to describe all the things that we do as a paleontologist and watch you and other kids get really excited about the idea of science and nature and actually going out there and making discoveries. So those are my two favorites. Some people say birds are dinosaurs, true or false. And are there other animals that are dinosaurs? It is absolutely true that birds are dinosaurs and there are no other living dinosaurs today. So a lot of people think that crocodiles are dinosaurs, they're not, they're reptiles. That rhinos, some people think because they look like triceratops, they might be dinosaurs, they're not. Um, so the only dinosaurs alive today are birds, but that is an amazing fact because it means that dinosaurs aren't extinct. It means, in fact, that with over 10,000 species of birds around today, there are more kinds of birds living today than there are mammals. So sometimes we call this the age of mammals, but really, if you count them all up, we're still in the age of dinosaurs. Dinosaurs still rule the earth if you just count them in terms of the number of species. Of course, there's lots of little things like insects that are, are even more numerous, so you could equally say it's the age of insects or bacteria, but I don't like that so much. I like the idea that it, we're still living in the age of dinosaurs. When you go out to dig, where do you usually do it? What do you wear and what tools do you use? So paleontologists usually go looking in places called badlands. And they're called badlands because they're lousy for ranching or for farming. But for us paleontologists, those are the good lands because it means that it's dry, there's not many plants, there's hills around with rock exposed so we can go digging in the rock to look for fossils. So we walk up and down the hills and those are the really good places to look. And they're found everywhere. So dinosaurs have been found on every continent, including Antarctica. And what do we wear? It depends on where we are. If you're in the Antarctic, you wear really bulky clothes and gloves and things. And if you're working in a desert, you know, you wear a t-shirt and shorts because it's 110 degrees out. So it really depends on where you are as to what you wear. The tools though, are pretty similar. So usually you have your backpack, 
you got your rock hammer and chisels and brushes and glue and then you have little plaster bandages for bandaging up small fossils and if you find something big you got to bring in big tools like rock saws and jackhammers to cut the fossils out of the ground and then you wrap them up in plaster and burlap and then you carry them out if it's small you might be able to put it on a backpack if it's bigger, you can put it on a stretcher by carrying a person out that's injured. It's kind of funny to carry an injured dinosaur. It's actually just a dead dinosaur, it's bones. But if it's bigger than that, you have to use a helicopter to airlift the fossils out. So we use lots of different kinds of tools to get dinosaurs out of the ground. Did you work on the show Dinosaur Train or did you just talk about dinosaurs at the end? I have been working on the show Dinosaur Train since before it aired. I am the science advisor. Uh, I come up with uh, the ideas for which dinosaurs to use and um, what kinds of roles those dinosaurs might play. I help to edit all the scripts for every show, uh, which is a lot of fun, and then I get to write my own part uh, that comes on at the end of every episode. So I have a lot of fun working on all parts of the Dinosaur Train production with a big team of people. Have you worked on other shows or movies besides Dinosaur Train? Yes, I've had the pleasure of working on a number of different uh, shows, movies, documentaries. I've been in about a dozen different documentaries. I hosted one on the Discovery Channel called Dinosaur Planet. Um, most recently, I was uh, a science advisor on the movie Walking with Dinosaurs that was produced by the BBC and appeared in theaters all over the world. So, yeah, because I work on dinosaurs, I get a chance to do all kinds of fun things with dinosaurs in the media. So I write books and I do movies and I do interviews with people like you and so it's a lot of fun. Is there anything else you can do as a paleontologist besides stick for dinosaurs? Absolutely. So paleontology is the study of all ancient life, not just dinosaurs. And about 99% of all the different kinds of creatures that have ever lived on Earth over the last 4 billion years are now extinct. Dinosaurs are only one group of animals. There's many other groups. There was mammals and there's still fishes and um, bacteria and trees and smaller shrubs and you know, you name it. Paleontologists work on all kinds of things. And even when we're out looking for dinosaurs, we don't just look for dinosaur bones because we're trying to reconstruct the entire world that the dinosaurs lived in. So we collect fossil leaves and fishes and lizards and turtles and crocodiles and mammals and flying reptiles and all kinds of really cool creatures. So in the end, we want to get a sense of what it would have been like to be there. If you could go in a time machine and get out in the age of dinosaurs, what would it look like? And that's what we're really trying to do. So we're, we're kind of like dinosaur detectives or paleo detectives where we're looking at all these clues to put together a mystery that's about 75 million years old. When you were little, did you appreciate the outdoors? <laughs> That's a great question. The answer is yes. I've been going camping since I was a tiny, tiny little baby. In fact, since I was even still in my mother's womb, I was going camping. And so much of my life has been spent living in a tent somewhere, either digging a dinosaur or out enjoying nature. And I still love getting out into nature. And I take my daughter out into nature whenever I can. And I think that that's why I became a paleontologist. It's because I love nature and the outdoors that I thought, wait a minute, somebody will actually pay me to travel around the world and dig up old fossils? This is the job for me. So yeah, I love nature since I was a little kid. And it's one of the things that I always tell kids to do is if you've seen Dinosaur Train, you probably know what I say at the very end. I say, get outside, get into nature, and make your own discoveries. And I think it's one of the most important things that kids can do. One of the most important things kids can do, and it's one of the most important things that grown-ups can do for kids is to get them outside and connect them with nature. What did you like to do in the do outdoors mostly? When I was a kid, 
I did all the things that kids like to do. I like to throw rocks into lakes. I like to jump around in the mud. I like to climb trees and throw sticks and go fishing and just about anything else that I could get into. Usually things I wasn't supposed to do when I was a little boy. I wasn't the best behaved little boy. So I was running around doing all kinds of stuff and probably people would say I really haven't grown up much and I'm still doing the kind of thing I used to do when I was a kid. What did you want to be when you were seven? <laughs> when I was seven, I wanted to be the same thing that I decided I should be when I was four. And that is a dinosaur paleontologist. Paleontology is one of the first words I learned how to spell. So I was a geek at a very young age. And there was a time in my life, this is true, there was a time in my life where I could spell the word paleontology absolutely correct, and I couldn't spell my own last name correctly. So I've always wanted to be a paleontologist. And there was a time in my life where I thought about doing other things, but boy, when I was four, five, six, seven years old, it was all about being a paleontologist. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure, Zoe.